Hello viewers and welcome to my blog for the Korean Grand Prix. Slight delay this year, unfortunately I injured my back this weekend so it's been a bit of a problem for me and delayed some of the content on the channel but hopefully that will recover in the coming days. I'm in this slightly bent over position at the moment but uh, uh, also on the channel uh, it's been good to see the feedback for the David Croft interview recently. That was good catching up with David discussing his career as well as F1 at the moment behind the scenes. Uh, obviously we've had the gameplay with David as well. Amazing fun. It really is very bizarre when you pick up the controller and you start playing and he starts commentating beside you and you completely forget where you are and you're trying to concentrate on the game because you've only got one run uh, and then you know suddenly he's talking to you and you're driving and you're taking it all in and uh, it, it was good fun actually really enjoyed that little run and I was glad I was able to share it with you as well and uh, in that in that enjoyment if you like and also elsewhere on the channel there was also the Johnny Herbert interview we had recently as well and that's another great insight into where we are the season um, where we were at that time a few weeks ago and that was filmed at the GT Academy final. That content from the GT Academy final will be coming up in about a week or so's time. We're going to have a nice little show about the GT Academy. It's something which uh, you know I would like to show more of on the channel uh, and it's something which uh, I'm going to discuss in terms of getting gamers behind the guys in the academy and learning more about them as well because I, I think it's important to show the potential of gamers becoming racing drivers but on to my blog for the Korean Grand Prix it's normally a, for me a pretty dull race um, it really is helped often by safety cars and and rain is what's normally made the race but besides that it's never been one that's necessarily excited me personally it has an exciting first few corners and then it kind of dulls itself down there are those two overtaking areas but uh, other than that they're what cause the action essentially but for myself personally I've never found it all that exciting um, practice obviously Mercedes very strong in practice saying they were going to take it to the Red Bull I, I don't think I ever thought for a moment that Sebastian Vettel was going to be beaten in terms of qualifying all the race it just seems to be so uh, I don't know it's just one of those things at the moment you can look at and say hey guys on top form cars looking fantastic they talk about it in practice, but then when qualifying comes, you see the true pace. And again, Sebastian was up there very quick. Of course, we had the 10-place grid penalty for uh, Mark Webber, which was a shame based on the uh, the uh, events that took place in, in Singapore. Um, so onto the start of the race then obviously a perfect start for Sebastian pretty much holds his first position uh, Lewis is unable to get in there the Saubers had, had a great start as well lots of battling through the field um, we've got the spin from, from Felipe Massa that's a shame for him um, Alonso unable to pass Hulkenberg that was the first part of the race wasn't it, it was just a kind of race where the field could have spread out Vettel just pulled away in the distance uh, a lot of the cars got stuck behind other cars and then simply couldn't get past depending on how the gearing was set and certainly some of them have geared their ratios quite well. The Sauber throughout the day it was mentioned good traction for them. Um, then we had Lewis out there spending way too long on his tyres which was quite strange. Mercedes should have seen that the tyres were falling off the cliff and should have brought him in no doubt that cost them a podium uh, for the race on that day. Bit of a shame I'm sure Lewis well he didn't look very happy about it did he? Certainly he felt that uh, I'm sure he had a word with the team afterwards about that one. Talking of that, we had Rosberg and his front wing failing. That was quite a shock, wasn't it? There he was overtaking Lewis down the straight. Suddenly, boom, sparks coming out. Uh, all action for him. Suffice to say, it was uh, lucky that the wing didn't go in, didn't fail completely and go entirely under his wheels, especially at that speed, because he really was going some. Uh, interesting. We don't see that very often these days, front and rear, rear wing failures, but uh, it shows how marginal some of the parts might be. Or be interesting to know what caused it. I don't know if Mercedes will ever release that information. Then we had the Perez tyre blowout. Uh, he was braking very heavily, flat spotted, and basically destroyed his own tyre. Um, this has raised a few questions. Obviously, Mark Webber not very pleased, seeing the bits blow up and nearly hit his car, uh, punctured his tyre, uh, damaged Lewis's tyre. Right after that pit stop as well for Lewis. And it's interesting. He's not happy. He's not happy with, again, talking to Pirelli. What's, what's going on there? And why are we still seeing tyres blowing? They're too marginal, he feels. They're, it's too easy. Perez hit the brakes too hard, therefore he exploded his tyre. And really you're saying, well, Perez hits the brakes too hard. Maybe you should have severely flat-spotted it, but make it explode. There needs to be a bit more durability in there, a bit more understanding, a bit more room for the driver. Um, I, I, you know, we go back to that Kimi Raikkonen moment at uh, Nürburgring many years ago, watching the wheel 
wheel juddering on the car. I thought it was one of the best moments in racing ever, just seeing the ridiculous amount of vibration that that car was able to take till it actually ripped the suspension off. But either way, the tyre stayed inflated. It stayed together, and that's something that we're not seeing now, and that still needs some work between Pirelli and the FIA to sort that. On to the restart, and we had Sutil taking Weber out. Poor old Mark. I mean, he gets a puncher, he gets a 10-place grid penalty. Now he's been taking out the race and his car's been set on fire and he had an engine failure at Singapore as well. It just isn't going his way, unfortunately. Fire, obviously that's when we had the drama. It did take a long time, I noticed, for Marshalls to get there. If he was burning in the car, I think he'd have been dead long before any Marshalls would have got to him on that corner. They certainly took a while. And then we had the fire engine uh, going up the track complete miscommunication there of uh, how quick uh, who was doing what but um, clearly there's someone who needs a talking to but uh, it's an organizational issue and I'm sure that that will change for next time but it did seem a long time to get to that car and it did seem the marshals uh, struggled with putting out that fire either way though the restart always creates more drama um, and that kind of bunched the field up then. You had Vettel get away again. Uh, we had Raikkonen getting past uh, Grosjean into second place, as we've seen before several times on the podium this season. And Hulkenberg. The race really was then about Hulkenberg holding up the rest of the field. We had Hamilton, Alonso, Button and Rosberg all behind him on those closing laps. Great drive for Nico Hulkenberg. May not have a drive next season. Apparently he's too tall. Woe is my life. But I will tell you that... Uh, uh, it's, I hope that changes. It sounds ridiculous to me. It should be about the best drivers seen in Formula 1. I know we say it again, but there's the money aspect. But besides that, now it's going to be you've got to have lots of money and you've got to be below a certain height to fit in the car. That's a regulation that's got to change. They've got to bring in some kind of ballast rule that's going to work there. Otherwise, you're going to have very talented drivers not making it into the cars. And I think that would be a crying shame for the sport. And the, sport, the word sport, it's very tenuous when you talk about Formula One these days. It's more about uh, financial resource than anything. So the driver market next year, there's lots of rumours. Obviously, Kimi uh, and Fernando at Ferrari. Still not 100% that Fernando will stay at Ferrari, but we'll wait and see on that one. We have Daniel and... Sebastian at uh, Red Bull but what about Lotus that's where the discussion's going on at the moment it could be it, it looks like it's going to be Roman Grosjean combined with who combined with Nico combined with Felipe Massa all kinds of rumours floating around. There's even been rumours of Rubens Barrichello coming back at the age of 41. The age of 41. Ru Rubens, Rubens coming back into sport. Will that happen? Who knows? There is lots of movement in the market at the moment. I think there is this discussion, though, especially with the mid-pack teams, of do we want a fast driver or do we want the cash? And what will give us more? You know, Is it worth having one pay driver who brings in lots of cash and one good driver who can then take that car and take it forward is it worth bringing in someone like rubens who has lots of cash and experience building cars who can come in next year and help develop the new car while the other driver then goes on and uh, you know they get a young talent who can just go for it it's certainly going to be an interesting balance for the teams over the next few weeks and there is a lot of discussion over this financial uh, resource and restrictions and everything else and where the FIA is going but either way there needs to be some cost saving measures somewhere in the world of Formula 1 so uh, that's it for this blog uh, the race overall I thought it was a race of several parts got a bit boring we had the safety cars that spiced it up a bit but in reality it was just about being locked behind Nico that made it fun bit of a classic battle nice to see the improved form from Sauber good traction in that car and mixing it up a bit with the other teams and it's good to see a bit of strategy in there as well but overall uh, Sebastian Vettel gets one step closer to his world championship. Kimi Raikkonen uh, continues to stamp his authority on the Lotus team with Roman Grosjean, but it's good to see an improved Roman as well in there. He remains looking much happier now, and uh, it's, I'm, I'm pleased to see that, that he's uh, developing within the team. Uh, but that's it for this blog of the Korean Grand Prix, and as ever, there'll be more from me very soon. <laughs>